Hello and welcome to another Wednesday wine. And yes, it's wine with an H. And people are like, no, you you misspelled that. No, I didn't misspell it. This whole thing, broadcasting live from Chicago, started during the pandemic where I needed to wine with my friends. Wine with an H. Que se oiga la H. And what better way to wine than with wine? And so there you go. That's why we name it Wednesday Wine. You and I get together and we whine about all things middle of the week. As you all know, I despise Wednesdays with a passion. I don't know, it, they're in the middle, they're in my way. Nothing ever good happens Wednesday, except that my daughter was born on a Wednesday. Patty, happy midweek. Bianca, hello, hello. Carmen, hello. So, um, I have to tell you that I am so excited about my flowers today. I'm gonna take this banner off so you can see my flowers. I know it says Wednesday wine right there. Let me move it to this. Let me move it to this so you can see it. Oh, you won't be able to see it now, but I'm gonna bring it up. My friends from Blossoms Anytime gave me this flower arrangement today. They do it every Wednesday. You see what's hanging right there? This is an ornament of Ricky Martin. That is Ricky Martin's face, or let's just say inspired by Ricky Martin, because you all know that I love my Ricky Martin. And if you don't know, you can look it up on my website, anabelaval.com, and you'll see the freak out I had almost three years ago over Ricky Martin. I'm sorry, I'm human, I'm a big fan. And so the girls knew that I'm not going to Puerto Rico for Christmas, and I'm super bummed because the last 20 years I've been spending Christmas at home. And so they said, we brought you a little bit of Puerto Rico and now I can put this on my tree. And just so you know, they do like, they have ornaments from everybody, for everybody. So they did a Prince bouquet with a Prince ornament. They did a Selena one with a Selena ornament. You name it, they have the ornament for you and they kind of match the flowers to the artist that you love. They're gonna have to make a Reese Witherspoon one for my friend, Natalie. So there you go. Here you go. Cheers. Mm. I realized that if we're going to drink on air, it has to go sideways. It looks so nasty when I go like this. How's everybody doing? Hi, Nancy. Hi, Deborah. I feel like Rumper Room. Jorge, it's great to see you guys. Uh, wish I was in Hawaii. Girl, don't we all? Let's drink to that. Salud. Mm. Let me tell you about my guest. I have to talk to her about this because in January, she had her debut uh, on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Not that it was her first, you know, rodeo because she has been on Colbert. Uh, she has been on Conan and she had been with Jimmy. We call him Jimmy at this house uh, because Amelia loves him. My daughter wants to be like Jimmy Fallon. Um, or at least she wants to be the first female host of The Tonight Show. I hope we don't have to wait this long to have a female host. But anywho, Carmen knows Jimmy from way back, I'm going to assume. And so she was debuting on The Tonight Show in January. And I'm sure she was thinking, this is it. I got momentum. Here we go. De aquí pa Hollywood, like they say in Puerto Rico. Y cangana, the shutdown. But today she told the New York Times, because I'm dropping names like that, that she found the tiki toki and she's never been so happy. Carmen Lynch, everybody, Hi. on Wednesday. Hi. Yeah. What a great intro. Thank you. I wish I was best friends with Jimmy Fallon. I wish. <laughs> Listen, you've been closer to him than we have been. But I have that knack. Like, I, like people always laugh because they're like, oh, you must know so many people. You must get so many freebies. No, girl. I'm the one who can never get the freebie. Yeah. Like, I show up and they can't find the tickets. Or like, you're going to meet Ricky Martin and then they cancel the concert because of the pandemic. You know, what's cool, though, is that um, I had a, I just happened to have a random teeth cleaning um, like a week <laughs> before Fallon. And, uh, and, you know, this dental place has like four dentists. And uh, and one of the hygienists came and she goes, well, I'm going to tell you, actually, Fallon, Jimmy comes to this uh, dentist office. And I was like, oh, my God. And then she was like, tell him, you know, so-and-so said hi. And that was so cool to just after the show, or like when he, when I met him before uh -huh. the set, I was like, by the way, so-and-so says hi. And he was like, oh, and I got a hug from that. 
my daughter would freak out. I've heard because he spends Christmas in Puerto Rico. Oh. Because you know we're so chismoso that we tell each other. There is yeah. no privacy in Puerto Rico. Like, yeah. we will pretend we won't tell anybody, but everybody knows that Jimmy Fallon spends Christmas with his whole family in Dorado. And apparently, he's like that. He's like super nice, super chill. But I I'm sure... Man, Carmen, when you get to that level, you and I started doing stand up around the same time. Oh at, my God, and I yes. met you here with, mm -hmm. uh, through Michael Kendo, amazing our friend and Mikey. dear promoter. Mikey. So <laughs> you had just started, and you said those crowds kind of like overwhelmed you because they were loud and crazy. And then you make it to Fallon. And I know that we have to pretend like we belong, but were you like freaking out like the first time you did that kind of level of show? Cause you've been on Conan, you were on the late show, you've been with Cole Bayer. Tell me how it feels as in Carmen, the big shot stand-up comedian, as in Carmen que ta suta because she's going big time. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny cause the first late night I did, I was a different kind of nervous from all the other ones. Cause I had this like, almost like a fear more than nerves. I was just scared cause I didn't know what to expect. And it was Letterman. And I was like, just so Ooh. like, oh my God, I'm so excited, but I have nothing to compare to this. Uh -huh. And uh, and so then I finally had something to compare to it. So then when I did my second late night, which happened to be another Letterman, I was almost like a different kind of nervous because now I'm like, okay, they liked me the first time. What if they don't like me this time? So it's like I oh, create these we're so crazy good at that. things in my head. You know, why can't I just say, do it? You know? It's that stupid. And I don't know if it's a stand-up comedian thing or a human thing or a woman thing that we're like, now, now it's when they're going to find out. It's that imposter <laughs> syndrome. Like, yes. this is it. I did well the first time, but that was uh, like beginner's luck. Now oh, it's no, when I screw it up. And then our persona changes, you know, because Letterman, I did it the first time. It was like eight years ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, you you grow in your stand-up, you evolve, you become more confident. Like when I watch those first few, I'm very like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know what I mean? And now I, I wouldn't do that. So yeah. there's an innocence you know, the to first, that. Like, I, don't, I think you know Pat McGann when, you know, yeah. anytime he's on one of those, like the first time we watch him, you know them because they're our friends and you go, oh my God, he's nervous. The second yes, time he yes. did it, he was like, fine. Because yes. probably like you, he had something to compare it with. Yeah. And, and you notice things like, you know, people tell you because you know so many comics. And, and that's the mm -hmm. great thing about this business is like, you could have a show at the Comedy Cellar and it's uh, a new person who just passed maybe five years in to someone who's been doing it like 30 years. So you get all kinds of conversations and advice and stuff. And, you know, you'll learn things like, you know, don't clasp your hands together because if you do it really tight, your knuckles will be white or like don't go too fast or, you know, whatever. Or don't, really? don't fidget. Like my very first TV thing was Comedy Central Premium Blend and my one foot just <laughs> going like this. Like it would just go back and forth. And I was like, stop, you know? I touch my hair. Oh touch yeah? Hair. Every time I do stand up and I record myself, I'm like, like I have hair extensions. Stop touching your hair. Oh uh, yeah. Where are you going with that? So Carmen, how did you st start with stand up comedy? I moved to New York City to go into acting. Like I was Where all about from? acting. Where are you from? From Virginia. Like my oh. mom is, my mom is from Spain and I grew up in Spain for a while, but then we just ended up in Virginia and, you know, cause my dad is from America. He, you know, he's from New York. He got jobs in, in DC. So we just settled in Virginia. And then after college, I was like, I don't want to do any of this. I'm going to be an actor. So uh, <laughs> I actually, I thought I was like, I'm either going to be an actor or I'm going to go into Wall Street, which I don't know where that came what? from because I, I'm not interested at all now. So I don't know what that was. It probably sounded very exciting. So mm -hmm. in my head, I was like, what is the place that has both of those? New York City, you know, there's Broadway, there's whatever. Not ever thinking about stand up because I never followed stand up. My parents never followed stand up. Like I watched SNL and I watched Seinfeld, but that was like some, you know, he was like a, an actor doing, he wasn't doing stand up on Seinfeld as much as, you know. So then I was, I just went to a stand up show with my friends once I moved out to New York. And I was like, wait a second, this is a job? Like I thought it was just people 
who were funny and um you know they were just naturally funny and they got on stage like i didn't know you like wrote jokes and and went to i didn't know any of that you know so i signed up for a writing class and because i was too scared to like just jump in you know people are like you don't need a class just go to an open mic i'm like i don't know what that mm -hmm. is like i'm scared i like to be prepared i like to be prepared and then you know you you meet people who want to do it too and i was not at all i was not going to go into this by myself i was so no. scared no nope. so i just met people in like my little class it was like you know it's like oh, your little new, mm -hmm. new little friends uh-huh and none of them do it but <laughs> oh none of them do it you're freezing a little bit on me carmen are you there yeah i am we can hear you but you're a little frozen hello i hear you but you're a little frozen you like froze on me you gotta love this come on do you want let me oh there you are i i feel i can move you hear i you defrosted you're for me? a second can you hear me i can hear you can you hear me let me pop carmen out and maybe she can maybe carmen can reconnect because we're having issues she's freezing but we can hear her i know and this poor woman this is how we're doing stand-up now we are popping in and out carmen pop out and pop back into the stream yard and we'll see what happens because i'm actually on ethernet to <laughs> at least it wasn't awkward frozen i know it happens you all need to give us a break right jorge you're being kind about that so yeah so Carmen was on the New York Times today talking about having to diversify, right? Having to, and Carmen, if you can hear me, you're still frozen. So get out of StreamYard and come back in. Um, so she was talking about how she discovered TikTok uh, because of the pandemic, because she couldn't perform live on, on stage. So she was, there's, there's a crop of, of stand-up comedians learning how to do this again, right? Trying to figure it out and learning how to do it virtually, which let me tell you, it's kind of odd. It's kind of odd. So yeah, she just popped out. She's gonna pop back in and we'll, I'm sure we're gonna get her, but she has a great story because listen to her. We all think we all wanna be stand-up comedians. The ones that are in this, ahora sí, te veo como moviéndote. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carmen. Okay, now you froze again. You had been unfrozen. No, it's not better. I'm trying to think. Hold on. Oh, she popped back out. This is going to be great. What's up, Anna? We're having technical issues. Meanwhile, we drink. Salud. Like, I had a, a Colombian friend who used to say, que sea un motivo. Let's do it for a reason. Mm. Let's see. Okay, we're doing better. What'd you do? Now, now I, switched, I switched to my phone and it was way worse. It was worse. You Same. were like, yeah. yeah. So no, this is way better. I don't know okay. what happened. Don't move it anymore. Okay, Carmen. So I love the idea that you didn't know what this career was. And then you took that writing lesson and it took, and what did you do? And I was upset. What happened was that teacher, oh, the, every class I found, was like three or four or five classes. And then the last class was a performance. So I kept looking for a, a class that did not have a performance, which makes no sense. Cause that's what stand up is. It makes no sense. So I went to a class and I said, listen, can I just take the class and I just won't do the performance? And he's like, you're gonna wanna do it. And I'm like, no, I already know, I'm too scared. I just wanna learn it and then absorb it. And then one day I'll come back and he's like, He's like, you're gonna wanna do it. So the, it was like a Sunday at six and I showed up just to be supportive. And then he just tapped me on the shoulder and we had each had to do five minutes and I was unprepared and I did like two minutes. But in those two minutes, I loved it. Something clicked. It was like, you know when people say that person walked in and they're like, I'm gonna marry that person. That's how I felt. I was like, this is my life. And I immediately just got sucked in. Isn't that weird? Two minutes. It was crazy. And it was and dumb it, jokes. I had dumb jokes about being tall. I was like, I'm so tall. And then I got a couple laughs. And I was like, wait a second. This is amazing. Give me more. Give me more. <laughs> yes.
What did your family say? They were, they were like, you're crazy. No, my mom is Spanish religious. She's traditional. She, I mean, I felt bad because I'm like, I, they paid for college. And now I was like, screw all of that. I don't want to do any of that. And, uh, and you know, I was pre-med in college for a while. I so, so I think they were excited that they were going to have a rich daughter. And then immediately I was like, I'm doing a shows at a bar. And then the worst thing happened, which if you ever want to do stand up, if anyone's listening, don't ever do this. But I invited my parents to a show. And it was the worst show. I don't know why it didn't click. It was like 11, 11 p.m. on a Monday. And there were five people. Every comic before me was like, dick this, F that. Sorry if I wasn't allowed to curse. Yeah, and, no. uh, and, uh, and they just stood there like, oh, my God, this is our daughter. This, this is our daughter. And, and I had to, like, you know, make my way out of that hole, dig myself back out. And it was hard, you know. I don't think I really saw any respect in their face until I told my dad I was going to Iraq to perform for the troops because he was like big military guy. Yep. So, so I think he was like, wait a second. You know, I think that really started to shift. At least you're doing some public service. <laughs> Even the Letterman thing helped, but for some reason the, the performing for the troops like really made them proud. Wow. So, my parents like anything I do in English. If it's with Americanos, they're so happy. <laughs> like anything I do with blonde, blue eyed people makes them happy. Oh, I know. I like her. I'm like, it's not going to make us a state. Chill out. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. But it was, it was very eye opening for them because they, they, my parents knew nothing about social um, show business. Yeah. It was either you're a starving artist yes. or you're Julia Roberts. Like there's, there's no in between. No. But a lot of us don't know that. How did you find it out? And where, when were you like, I can live off of this. I could make a decent leaving. Well, I worked as a temp for a long time. Like I was a temp at Goldman Sachs for a long time. Oh, you were at Wall Street. I know. <laughs> but it was all like, um, it was it was fun because it was all these artists. They just hired us to do like um, PowerPoint yeah. and Excel and stuff like that. So um, so it was like supportive. Like that's when I learned like the, the one thing that was really hard for me, the hardest thing was disciplining myself because I'd had several jobs like with a boss and now I had to like be my own boss. Oh. So the minute I got like my first little TV, it was like this little tiny show. It was... Um, it was some cable show. I can't remember what it was called, but I was like, oh, I got this. I already got this. Like, this will be easy, you know? And then it's like, no, you got to keep writing and you got to keep pushing. And, you know, this was before, like, I don't even think Facebook was, had started yet, you know? Nope. So, nope. um, so I had to really push myself. And then one day I noticed that I was going up and then it just kind of went like this. <laughs> and then it just started to go down. And then one of the club bookers was like, you know, you should probably do new jokes because your jokes are funny, but, but you're doing the same stuff over. And he meant it well, like, you know, helping me out. And I was like, oh my God, like, I didn't realize any of that, you know? No. And there are like a few schools of stand-up comedians as an outsider. I, I've noticed that some people do new jokes constantly. And then some people start with the core they always have the same jokes and then they insert in the body of it yes which i was like oh i get it and then there there's stuff like you know how singers get tired of jokes like i got tired of my old set oh yeah no that is actually i love when that happens because that pushes yep. me yep but but yeah i mean now i love new jokes like now that's all i do is like i don't care if i've got a piece of paper in my it's hand working or not yes because that's the part that makes me happy is like creating that joke. What is, you know, Roberta is asking here because we can see people commenting. What is your favorite line of jokes? Like what are, what are, what is your standup about? My standup? Well, now it's a lot about my boyfriend and <laughs> he just. Is it the 50 year old? Yes. Is it? He is. And, uh. And um, a lot of my nieces, my family. I mean, the one advantage of my parents not knowing anything about stand up is that they never saw my shows. So I could talk about them. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh -huh. and then like very New York stuff. Like I talk about therapy a lot, you know, like New York there, like being in a, a here in New York for now like 15, 20 years. And, and uh, my sister, I talk about, so just talk a lot about people and like dumb things I do. 
I love that your niece, one of your nieces told you, because we were talking about being popular on social media and YouTube and whatever, and that one of your nieces was like, oh, so are you famous already? Or what? <laughs> she, one of them is, one of them asks a lot of questions and the other one is just a little more like, she doesn't, more less inquisitive. She's inquisitive in other ways. But I remember, you know, one of them would be like, are you married yet? Are you going to have babies? And then one day she was like, are you, are you famous? You know, cause they live in Spain. So they don't know what's happening out here. Ah. So she's, like, she's like, are you famous? And I was like, okay, this is pressure. No, like, you don't get it from your parents, but your nieces are like, I know. Yeah. and then, and then I go, no, I go, I go, some people in New York know me, but nothing crazy. And she goes, why not? <laughs> why aren't you famous? Well, how has it been 24 so seven? with the boyfriend you know it's different because um i'm not i'm on the road a lot so it's it's one of those adjustments you know like i was reading this article that said that um that newlyweds are the, the highest divorce rate during corona is for newlyweds oh, and i'm like, like and i i was like wow really and i i was the only thing the only reason i could think of was maybe there's they're they're in their honeymoon phase still and they haven't adjusted to like being angry and bitter and resentful the way you know we can be after a long relationship you know you just have to kind of oh you're being such a nah, i'm gonna go watch netflix you know right. i don't know but um, how long have you been with this guy five years ah no this must have kind of been that hard. No, 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 it wasn't hard. It was just an adjustment because mm -hmm. I, I tend to want to just run. I run from things. I, that's why traveling works and comedy works is because like, I don't mind packing to go to the airport. I don't mind leaving. I don't mind. And he's more like uh, enjoys a book and likes to read. And so now he's in the same environment that he was before COVID, yes. right? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know? So oh, I think I was driving him crazy. Yes, I think so. This is a great question from Mary. How do you teach yourself to write jokes? Um, I don't know if they, I mean, you kind of, you kind of learn your style the more you write. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know much of my writing style because I never tried it before I came to New York. But I, I just found out that I was very like set up punch. Like I, I almost cut the fat too much. Like some people are wordy and need to kind of trim their jokes. Yeah, like long ended, like run on sentences. I tend to write a joke and go, wait, that doesn't work. And I have to add stuff to it. Um, but that's just something I learned through practice. Yeah. And a lot of times I learn it from just honestly experiencing life. Like. It has been harder to write now because I'm not, whenever I'm on the road, I always leave the hotel. I walk around, I try to get to know the place. Even if it's some small town in Ohio, I'm gonna find material that is relatable to the audience. So, so I try to just kind of like throw stimulus, stimulate myself. Also, as you walk around, you're thinking of material to throw out that night. Well, it's not, it's not even that I'm thinking about it. It kind of just comes at your face because, yeah, you know, because yeah. you'll see like, you know, the uh, a, a little, um, I don't know, a store with just socks and, you know, and, and you're just like, what's up with your big giant sock store on Center Street? You know what I mean? It's not a joke, but I'll, I'll, I'll learn to like somehow find a way to incorporate that into you that. Know, you know that I mean, like you're not afraid to throw it out there that night. No, because they, no. they tend to, I, I would in the past, but now yeah. it's just like, I find, I find that the best time, the times I have the best sets is when I'm relaxed. It's not when I have a set list. It's not when I've been like running around in my hotel room, making an outline of all my jokes. It's when I just go work out at the hotel gym, you know, chill out and go, I got this. The jokes are here. Yeah. And and I know how I'm going to start and I probably know how I'm going to finish. But the middle is usually just whatever. <laughs> you know, it's I like that. Be, I it's like to be organic because then it's conversational. Because then I would do. Do, what? You, do you think, Carmen, sorry to interrupt you, that these Zoom shows that we've all been forced to do have also like just let you try new material and screw it? 
Yes. Well, because we get to do jokes in our pajamas, you know? So there's already like this laid back attitude. Like I'm wearing my pajama pants right now. <laughs> no offense. No, don't worry. You know? But I mean, there's, there's a laid back thing to it. And, uh, and also I find, and I don't know if this is, um, being on camera now or whatever, or being all pent up at home and not like being, but I find that I I'm talking faster. Like I know I'm talking fast now, but even when I do my jokes, they're, they're not as deadpan as they would be on stage before COVID. Because a lot of times there's no, there's no rhythm. Like on stage, there's like a conversation with the audience. You hear the laughter and there's like a sense of timing and half yeah. of these same audiences they're muted or they're talking to their dog or you know what I mean? And it's like, and it's more like acting too. It is right. Yeah. Like you're acting for TV and there's a crew recording it. And then in, like, you don't get that feedback. Yeah. And you got to keep going. Your brain's like, Oh, you got no laughs. I'm just going to tell the next job. Right. Yeah. You go from one job to, okay, Carmen, what the heck is vertically obese? <laughs> Vertically obese is, I kind of wanted to write a joke about, um, people are so offended now, and obviously some things are correct. We shouldn't say certain words, but other things I think were just very politically correct. And people are just like, oh my God, it's 2020. And I'm like, well, we said that 10 years ago. Why is it so bad now? You know? So I was like, what's going to happen with the word tall? You know, and then I made a joke that I'm like, it's not tall anymore. It's vertically obese. Okay. But did you ever think tall was a bad thing? No, no. I mean, when Probably I was in high school, it was hard. Yeah. But no, I don't mean, I love it. It's fine. Yeah. But I just wanted to like tease that. And, uh, and then it's funny every once in a while I do that joke and I'm like, oh, it's offensive. You can't say it. It's vertically obese. And this woman was like, oh my God, I had no idea. You know, so it's, it, it's believable people. Some people believe it's, it's offensive. And that's the name of your new album. Yeah. And is it, when did you record this? I recorded it when COVID had already started. So I recorded it in the end of February mm -hmm. in uh, Indiana, in Bloomington, Indiana. There's a great club called the Comedy Attic. There's and, something about yeah. the Midwest for you. What? There's something about the Midwest for you. <laughs> Hey, some places in the Midwest are cool, you the, know? If you yeah. mean Chicago, for sure. What? Chicago, for sure. Oh, Ch oh Ch Chicago is not, doesn't feel very, it feels like a city anywhere. I feel like you guys are cool. I, I feel yeah. like if I was going to move to the Midwest, because I never thought, like, when you grow up in Puerto Rico, you always go East Coast, right? Like, that's where I was going. I went to college. That's where my family lived. So you were going to go East Coast. So when I moved to Chicago, I was like, St. Louis must be a street. That's what I would tell myself. So I was like, because I didn't, I was like, okay, I'm in the Midwest. What now? Yeah. What are these corn fields? What are these soy fields? Anyway, Carmen, and what I love that you're doing is this podcast in Spanish. Yes, you were on it. I love it. I'm, I'm going to post it after we're done here. So Carmen is fluent in Spanish, but you, why did you decide to do a podcast? Well, um, I, um, have one in English and I've always wanted to, um, to hit those audiences that, you know, be, use my Spanish more right with stand up Spanish. I make dumb videos and a lot of times I'll make them in Spanish. So, um, <laughs> So I was talking to, you know, Lee, Lee Hernandez. Yeah. yeah. So he was talking about a podcast in Spanish and I immediately was like, I'm in, I'll do it. And he gets the credit for the title. Cause he was like, he what about the credit for Wednesday wine? He gets the credit. Oh my for God. Wednesday wine. So That's he crazy. is our publicist. Cause I, well, I could only afford him for two months, but I only did it for one. But okay, Lee is so nice and he's right, still treated right. like his clients. He's so sweet. Oh, so right. Lee gave me the name of Wednesday Wine. And he's like, oh, I hear funny. you complaining. Let's do wine, like with an H. Yes. Carmen, it is such a good podcast. And you can have an excellent. And the great thing is that Carmen will ask you, like, is that a word in Spanish? Did I say that right? You know, because there are so many words that are very similar, mm -hmm. you know? And when I do stand up in Spanish, especially in New York, not so much in Spain, because I feel like their words are more different. Mm -hmm. But here, and, and you know, I'll be like, um, 
I don't, I can't think of a word right now, but it'll be like, um, how do you say? And then you just add the ando, oh, you, know? Ando. you know? And I'm like, really? I was kind of joking that it was that. And they're like, no, that's so, how we say it. <laughs> so there's, um, you know, the food disposal, the, brrr, the thingy. Yeah. So in Spanish, we say triturador. Okay. And so mom will be like, ¿Cómo se dice triturador en inglés? And I go, trituration. <laughs> I love that. My mom does that. My mom, do you remember when we had, this is going to age me, but remember VHS tapes? Yeah. When we had the VHS yeah. tapes? And my mom would always tape uh, One Life to Live. It was her favorite show, One Life to Live. And she'd be like, no vayas a abajo, don't go downstairs porque estoy tapeando. She'd say tapeando. Tapeando. And I was like, I don't think that's a word, mom. No. And she's like, it oh. is now. We all do it, and I'll do it to Steve. Like, if I get stuck in a word, yeah. I'll just add the, uh, you know, I'll ando or the yeah. a tone. Yes, yes. And then it makes it English or Spanish. End of story. Where can people find Conversando con Carmen? Conversando con Carmen is on YouTube, on my channel. And, um, yeah, that's the best place to watch it. The whole hour is on YouTube. I love it. And it I, I realized after your podcast that if you interview me in Spanish, I say more things than I should than in English. Well, well that's okay. I mean, it, you're open. It's fine. Como que en la lengua, en la lengua madre me esplayo. Como like, ah, I say, like, I I said, oh my God, I said all that to Carmen. Oh my God. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. So then um, I th this morning you were on the New York Times. Yes. And it's in on paper, whatever, in paper copy tomorrow. In print, honey. Print. print. <laughs> Está en printeando. You can't tell who's in the news. Printeando. En el printeado. En la versión printeada. <laughs> the paper copy. The print. La versión printeada. Manana with the squiggly on the end. Manana. Squiggly. Okay, so you discovered TikTok. I discovered it during the pandemic too. Yeah, I was always very like whatever about it. And then mm -hmm. when the pandemic hit, um, I was like, you know, I always I love making videos. And then I realized how easy it is to make a video on there, you know? And and then I just went nuts. I was like, well, this is what I'm going to do because what else am I going to do? You know, do. what else are you going to do? All right, Carmen. So people can see you on YouTube, on TikTok. They can download your uh, new album on Spotify, iTunes and CarmenLynch.com. And everything, all Instagram, TikTok, everything is at Carmen Comedian, everything. So that's it. Yeah. Thank you. It's always so good to see you. Please don't freeze. No, don't freeze. Are you there? Oh, there you are. If you're, if you're still, if you're still I'm <laughs> and then we all freak out. Oh my God! <laughs> no, I just stopped. Just stop. <laughs> Please don't freeze. Please. Not again. That was so scary. I had to be alone with my thoughts. No, I start screaming. And the no. whole family goes on red alert. Like, <laughs> you know, starts pulling cables. Like, it's a it's a show here. Yeah. And like, okay, okay, all right, we're okay. No, the whole house, it's awful. It's oh my god! But at least it's entertaining. You get to like hang out. You know, not alone. I always feel bad for everyone who's alone. Like sometimes that sounds really nice. And sometimes I'm like, it's gotta be hard on lockdown to just like sit there with yourself. You yes. know? I, I I I check in on my friends that are alone a lot. Yeah. That's cool. They, you can't even see your parents. I know. That's so hard. You can't even see. I mean, like, it's like I have friends in Chicago who live alone and they don't, I mean, they're afraid to see their parents because they don't want to get them sick. So yeah. Oh, look, look, Carmen. Carmen Contreras says you show up on her for you page. Oh, that's nice. Another Carmen. Carmen Contreras Ar Arvizu. 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 Mira, que if you, is your dad Irish? His, uh, yeah, but like his grandparents, not him. 
Does he speak Spanish? Un poquito. He, um, he, he can understand it very well. They all when I was a kid, though, he didn't understand it very well yet. And uh, we would talk about him, like, in, we'd, like, like throw parties, like, for his birthday. We'd be like, let's just talk in Spanish. Like, he won't know. So it was really convenient. But now you can't do that. Now he, he gets it. And he lived in Spain with you guys? Oh, yeah. He was stationed in Spain in the military. So it was perfect for my mom because she got to hang out with her family. And then my dad just worked there, like, on the base. Neat. What? Where did they meet? They met, oh, it's romantic. They met in Barcelona. The, the bar is still there. It's just like this lounge. Uh -huh. And um, and my sister and I went a couple of years ago. We wanted to see where they met. And it's in this little plaza in Barcelona. I can't remember what it's called. And, uh, and you know, my mom, uh, my dad didn't speak any Spanish. Mm -hmm. And my mom didn't speak any English. But my mom was out with one of her friends who spoke English. So my dad walked in with some of his military friends because they were on a submarine or a ship or something and it had docked for a few nights. Mm -hmm. It was a ship. It was a ship. And uh, and they came in and uh, and my mom says she remembers looking up and going like, look at those American men. Really? You know? And uh, and then they invited my mom to a party on the ship. And my mom no, is very no. traditional. She no. was like... No, I, no, 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 no. So I don't think she, I don't think she went. At least that's what she told me. I don't I don't think she went. And then did they correspond or what happened? Carmen, me está dejando sin memoria. Para un año y medio, a year and a half, they wrote each other letters. So I don't know where these letters are, but I want them. And uh, they wrote each other letters. They only saw each other four times. The fourth time, they uh, my dad proposed. So they got married in Spain and then he whisked her off to, I think he was stationed in Georgia by then. So he, he married her, only his parents on his side showed up and then he had to take her back. So she lived on base in Georgia with like American wives. I'm telling and you. And that, that was hard for her because she had to like outrageous. made like, you know, American meals and stuff. You, no, know? Pero, you know, that, that takes a lot. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was hard. It was, uh, it was tough for her. And then my sister did the same thing. My sister met a, a guy from Spain and she's in Spain. So now it's like, you know, you mom and dad. And then my sister's with a Spaniard. And y tú? Y yo con un americano. <laughs> en Nueva York. Y siendo comedian, imagínate. Un, come, un comediante. Una un, comediante. Una cómica. Una, you know what I heard? Una standupera, which is another <laughs> word. Have you ever heard that? No. Una standupera. Uh, it is una standupera. And I was like, that's a joke. And they're like, no, that's what we yeah. say, standupera. Are you serious? Yes. It went from monolo, monologuista is the first word I heard. Monologuista, sí. And then comida, comica or comediante, and then uh, standupera. Mira, Maria loved your American meals, that your mom had to make American meals. <laughs> <laughs> she had no clue. She learned, like, she, you know, she made, like, tuna noodle casserole, like, those kind of American like, tell you. casserole things. Yeah, she Not learned a lot cheese. of that. But see, and like Deborah says, it's a great movie plot. It is. Yeah. I, if I can find these letters, I really want them. And I asked her one time because I was like, I want to make a movie with these letters. Because, you know, how do you speak to somebody that you're interested in and you don't speak their language and it's in a letter? Like, you don't have, like, Google. So I'm like, did they draw, like, little stick figures with a heart saying, like, I miss you? You know, I don't know. Like, tell you? She won't tell you? She's, oh, she's very private. And I'll go, can I just, can, can you just tell me where the letters are? I don't even have to read them. Just tell me where they are. And she's like, I don't know. I forgot. And I'm like, no, you didn't. Okay, they were dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I want those letters. Oh, you better, you, she better watch out. She better not travel. I know. No, but they're, they're hit. Even if she travels, I'm telling you, they're hidden somewhere. And uh, yeah. I'm going to have to have, you know what? Next time I see her, I'm going to ask for them again. Yeah, because this, come on now. This could be the, this could, see, is someone saying it's very romantic. They're in their closet top shelf. No, not if this lady's very. Oh, no, they're not there. Trust me. I've gone to the top shelf for, for other things. And there are things there. 
but it's not the letters. It's like I found Christmas presents once as a kid on shelves. Yeah. You know, it's not. And you know what? Growing up, I honestly was very confused. It's like a romantic story, but I thought it was that easy to um, to meet somebody. Like it just, I love that you have a balloon that just came over to your, your, yeah. your side. Yeah. But I really, I really thought I was like, oh, well, after four dates, I'll know if he's the one. You That's know, shocking. That's amazing. Well, yeah. Carmen, that balloon was from my son, who I call El Metiche, who probably thinks that we have spoken too long. He doesn't understand the Latino goodbye. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we can say goodbye, but wrap it up. It's a question. Hi, uh, this, this is my half and halfer. Hi. Hola. Do they speak Spanish? Bueno, este, do you speak Spanish, Alex? No. No. Yeah. Amelia, sí. Amelia, sí. Amelia, sí, but he is more like, uh, he understands it, but um, he won't speak it. Oh, yeah. Wait until, oh. he falls in, well, until he falls in love with someone who speaks it. Yeah. And then there's that, mi mamá is de no. Puerto Rico. No. <laughs> no. Yo no, sé bailar no. salsa. No, 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 no. No, it's the same in English and Spanish. So you're saying Spanish right now. No. No, 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 no. I sound like your mother, don't I? No. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's how your sister probably sounds. She, but she does the opposite. She only speaks to them in English, you know. Right. Which is very smart because if he's Spanish, it's perfect. It's the way that she should do it. But I don't know how she does it because I would just give up. She always goes, I don't understand you. I don't understand you. Oh, I do answer in English. You better answer in English. And they're like, oh, mommy, I hate it when you do that thing. <laughs> like, Alex will go, I don't understand you. And I'll say, es problema tuyo. <laughs> nice. And then he's like, oh. and then I rip, slow down and find easier words. It's harder than you think it is. It's really harder than you think. It is. And texting is good for them too. Cause they, you know, they text me in English, but there's a lot of like mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I, I just reply just the same. I respond like, oh, you did this. And then I'll spell it correctly without like blaming them. And but it's so cute because sometimes phonetically I have to figure it out. I'm like, yes, what is that word? <laughs> but that's how they teach them how to spell now. They oh, really? do it phonetically. You oh. and I didn't learn that way, but they do. No. And then you and then you have to tell them, oh, that, that is not written that way. ¿Cuál es el punto? What is the point? Yeah. ¿Cuál es el punto, hombre? El punto, hombre. Okay, ya está bueno. Qué pesado. All right, Carmen. Everybody, go find Carmen Lynch in all social platforms. And here is the information on her new album. Ya me va a destruir la casa, el pesado este. Ya está bueno. See, don't you think it's better that you're just there with the 50-year-old? <laughs> I don't know. I like, I'm very childish. So I like to play games and board games and stuff. So. I'll send you one. <laughs> the train. I'm sure I'll send it back in like three days. I'll be like, I've had enough. Please. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Oh, I'll come get them. All right. Thank you, Carmen. Have a Thank good you one. So much. Bye. Bye, Thank honey. You. Bye, bye. All right, everybody. Hey. Alex. Yeah. He escaped from his father. He escaped from his father. I tried. For whoever wants to find out where the flowers are from. Uh, West Lakeview blossoms anytime. Guys, thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, this is what happens when you do live broadcasts from your house and the only adult uh, loses control. Have a wonderful night, everybody. We'll see you next week.